So coming to where you were, you were playing rugby and you were passionate about rugby, as you were saying, and then you had your accident in 85. How was that as a point of, of, of a moment in time for you? Because it must have been very, very difficult to, to deal with that at the time. And then, of course, you know, you, you, you got into coaching. But just talk about that as a, as a moment. Yeah. Um, well, I think, you know, one of the things I'd like to sort of talk about on this podcast, you know, it would be bounce back ability, you know, mm. uh, for want of a better term. But resilience, you know, the ups and downs of life, the ups and downs of... Um, of all sorts of things that happen to you, whether it's in employment or, you know, losing your job, all those sort of things really uh, that people face during their lifetime. So, you know, having that resilience and particularly coming back, coming from a coal mine in town, I mentioned earlier, the the dreadful disaster in Aberfan and people having to get on with their lives. And, you know, there'd been numerous uh, sort of accidents in pits and explosions and all sorts of things that I'd heard about as a kid growing up. And just seeing the resilience of the people of the valleys and how they work through those tough times, you know, I'm sure it must have been mm. you know, an influence to me. So certainly, yeah. you know, I'm a fracture of my skull. I'm totally deaf in the left ear, which uh, comes in handy when it's my round to buy a few drinks. <laughs> um, and certainly when the kids were young, my wife uh, was particularly sort of frustrated with me that I didn't happen to hear the kids in the middle of the night. But um, <laughs> I guess that was the only sort of useful thing about uh, the deafness. But um, you know, sort of, I broke a few bones on my back and vertebrae in my back. I had problems with my balance. So, yeah, I was in a bad way for quite a while. Mm. Um, but, you know, I was determined to, to get back and, and do something with my life and not make that the sort of point where everything sort of fell apart, you know. So I embarked on uh, coaching courses and uh, I was offered um, uh, the chance to coach my village team, which I thought was... I was hugely honoured to do that mm-hmm. but I always remember when I went to see a specialist I was in the car with my dad and my you know I'd been close to to the Welsh team I made the Welsh squad as a player and suddenly that was all gone and my dad said to me well son you know uh, you've just been to the specialist they've advised you to give up playing rugby um, you know what are you going to do now I said well if I can't play for Wales I'm going to coach Wales yeah which was a hell of a statement really you know and um Reaching out and putting that power to the universe. I mean, uh, you know, I said to you earlier about saying, right, to my mother, I'm going to marry someone like you, you know. Yeah. Um, so don't be afraid, guys, to put it out there yeah. uh, to, the, to the universe. Tell them what you want to do. Uh, dream big. Aim high because if you do that, um, the universe will listen, you know? Yeah, you know what? You make such an important point because I think very often people almost are scared to dream, mm. you know, and to make those dreams a reality. But when you've got such a strong vision and purpose and, you, you know, you're really focused on it, it is incredible, isn't it, What how you actually gravitate towards that. You make you take actions, of course, to make it happen, but yeah. I think you're, you're absolutely right, you know. Put it out there and, and you can achieve anything you want. Yeah, and look, you know, I always say to my athletes, right, the biggest thing of all about being successful, you know, whether it's a rugby player or in, as an athlete, is BHW. You know, it's a supplement that I tend to prescribe to all my athletes, and it's called bloody hard work. Yeah. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, if you put BHW into something, so I made that statement to the universe that I wanted to be uh, coach of Wales. Um, I don't know much reflection I'd given to that or much thought I'd given to that, but, <laughs> you know, it was out there. Yeah. And then... Ultimately, that in itself is not enough. So you need to ally that uh, mm. to the BHW. So you put the bloody hard work in. I, you know, I, I went on the courses. I tried to, you know, improve myself as a coach. I um, uh, took up jobs in coaching that would test me and stretch me. And in fact, my first job uh, after coming back from my coaching course, I thought I knew it all. You know, I just done the Welsh Rugby Union Level Two coaching course. I spent a week learning all these new drills and moves and plays I thought I was going to take the world on I came uh, to my village team to become the head coach and, and my village team were quite a successful team with a lot of the lads I'd played rugby with as youth players and that had won the Welsh Youth Cup so they were good good players good team and you know we lost the first four games and we lost the first four games mm-hmm. and the committee called me in and gave me a yellow card and they said listen if you lose on Saturday you're probably going to get sacked you know wow. so uh, that was a bit of a sobering sort of start to my coaching so I went to speak to the guys that were my, you know, my peers. I played rugby with them. They were in my team. Uh, I was the coach, but they were the same age as me. A lot of these guys. And I said, "Look, guys, where am I going wrong? You know, I've done the courses. I thought I knew it all. Yeah. We've lost the first four games. This is a very pro club. We don't lose. You know, I can't remember the last time we lost four games. 
Um, and he said, look, Mike, we love what you're doing with the skills and the new sort of training methods you brought to us, but we're just not fit enough. In the old days or last year, we'd go run up the mountains. You know, we'd, right. we'd do pre-season running where we wouldn't see the ball. You know, you, you, you've, you, you've done ball work with us. You've tried to improve our skills. Yes. Um, and give us new skills. But, you know, we're missing that sort of, um, that building block of fitness and conditioning. And just that mindset, the attitude that that brings with it. So I said, okay, well, what I'll do, I'll tailor my program. I'll cut back on the skills and we do some more fitness. And yeah. we, we won the next game, thankfully. So the committee didn't call me <laughs> in the room. And in fact, Jeanette, we won every game after that and won the league. We went from losing, uh, you know, four games on the yeah. trot. You know, be, I was looking at being finished before I'd even started coaching. Mm. Thought I knew it all, breezed into the room, knew I could take on the world. But you know what I do? I had to do, I had to reach out to my people. Uh, to, the, to the people I was working with, I had to reach out and say, where am I going wrong? What, what do I need to do? What's the feedback? Mm. You know, uh, give me feedback that helps me to improve and helps us to improve. And looking back, I'm quite proud I did that. It was probably a desperate move at the time, but it was something I would um, advocate for, for everyone. I think showing that vulnerability around that time as well uh, and realizing that no one person can know it all. You know, I think mm. I was really important. And that saved my bacon. I'm yeah. on the back of that. I've managed to, you know, get 35 years in coaching. Yeah, you're right because I mean, very often I think sometimes our ego can get in the way, can't it? You know, and if you are the boss or you're the coach or you, you know, whatever field you're in, sometimes you can think that you have to have all the answers. You know, and and, and actually, no one has all the answers. Um, and it actually takes a bigger person to reach out like you did and then look at the results you got. Yeah, and I don't know if I was a bigger person or just backed into a corner. You know, I with no way to turn, but it, it certainly <laughs> worked for me.